a city's creative identity is shaped by its artists, craftspeople, and designers, who also have an important role to play. They continue our age-old urge to create and to make things by hand. And in an age of mass production, work made by hand may be more important than ever. My name is John Baker. My wife Julie and I own a design store and exhibition space in Toronto. We believe that well-designed, beautifully crafted items have the power to enhance our everyday lives. In this series, I'm going to meet some of the people whose handcrafted production is shaping this city of makers. Lupo Brezina is a furniture designer, best known for his unique style of robust wooden furniture, which often implements reclaimed timber. Lubo was one of the first people in Toronto to create this individualistic style. I went to his studio to find out more. Can you explain a little bit about what your work looks like? There's two, two sides to it, and it's, I kind of explain it as a, on a spectrum. There is the left side and the right side. And is it left brain, right brain? <laughs> I don't know, but on one side, I don't know which side. Yeah. It's chunky and heavy. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it's, it's kind of dainty and light. Yeah. A lot of it is kind of, it's Japanese joinery, which is really uh, refined, but you're, you're kind of matching this refined joinery and then this robustness of the... Well, this, of the I, I, I was always kind of fascinated with big timbers, right? Like yeah. Just the, the, the solid mass of, of wood, right? Yeah. And then I just wanted to explore how, how you know how you can take these timbers from it, their raw state and just make them into very simple looking furniture. Yeah. A lot of the timber that you work with is reclaimed. What's significant about using reclaimed lumber? Well, I I started using it before it became cool, I guess. Um, I liked it at first because the wood was so tight grained, you yeah. know, like you know, and it's stable. You cut into it and and you can count a few hundred rings yeah. and in a small little block, you know, yeah. that, and I kind of became fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. Also thinking about the history of the wood. You try to paint the story of, yeah. of, of where it was reclaimed, where... Definitely. Yeah. It kind of brings the history back, you know, it brings it into the, into the present again. I think for me, one of my favorite works is your barn. We call it the barn shrine now. The inspiration was a trip to get reclaimed wood. And, and one of our, our trips was to a barn that was just about to get demolished, right? I had this kind of a sad feeling about seeing this beautiful piece of vernacular architecture being destroyed. So I wanted to kind of enshrine a barn, you know, we pretty much shrunk the barn down to, to, to size and brought it down, yeah. <laughs> down to the city for people to enjoy. And it kind of works in a perspectival sense. So at the beginning, you have big timbers and then at the end, they're, they're tiny a, little sticks, right? A, it was incredible. Behind us is the shelf full of beautiful chairs. Can you tell us what we have here? The chair, I guess it's a long-term project. <laughs> I've been doing it for maybe three years now, and there is maybe seven different versions of them. The first one I ever made was this, and, and that's just kind of a study in structure. The cross bracing and all that, everything's done like you, it would be done in a barn. This one's a bit chunky because I made it out of pine, that was just a model. Yeah. The other ones are all made from oak, so I could make the pieces more slender. The last one I made was this love bench. Oh yeah, I like that. The whole point was how slender can I make it before it all falls apart <laughs> and and it has like you know, <laughs> the back broke it's too slender so are you happy with where you are or is it still in, in progress it's still in progress okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah whenever I get a chance I, I push it along to the next uh, prototype the next stage <laughs> so um, you have a little space on Dundas Street West and it's kind of this curiosity window 
and it's almost like a window into your life. Can you tell us a little bit about that space? Sure. The window is a place where I can show my experiments. You know, most of the times I, I do work for others, mm -hmm. but in my head I have all these projects that I want to do for myself. So whenever I do something of that sort, I put it in the window to display. And people get to interact with it. Yeah, I always hear people talking about it. You know, I'm kind of like a voyeur <laughs> behind the curtain. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, yeah. listening to, to people talk about my work. So what are you working on now? Now, um, a, f a couple of commissions. Uh, yeah. The most significant one now is a, is a bed. They just came to me and said, okay, we would like a bed. And it's got to look like something out of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> In the movie, you have all, all this kind of curvilinear yeah. architecture. I always make models as a presentation for the client because it's nice when a client can hold yeah. hold it and Absolutely. spin it around, look at, look at it. It's for a client who wants to experiment. You once said you don't have a lot of return customers. Why is that? The things that I make will last for a long time, yeah. I suppose. You make them it, to last a lifetime. There, there's no veneer that peels off. Yeah. There is, the corners don't get chipped. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, even in this time of mass production, is there a growing awareness for handcrafts? People are a lot more aware now yeah. because of mass production, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of my customers that used to have mass produced stuff, they're, they're just tired of that, right? Tired of that system. Not to say that all mass-produced items don't have a soul, but most of them don't, right? Most of them, it's just two people, they're just functional pieces of furniture and that's it, right? Whereas handcrafted art or furniture, you can feel the person who actually made it. You can, you know, you can feel the, the effort that was put into that. Um, it wasn't a machine that was making it in a factory somewhere, right? If you sit down, at a table that you can see the joinery, some of it is exposed, or you can look at the grain. At least for me, it kind of brings joy, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why, I mean, there's a growing trend for, for craft. It's because people are so tired of disposability. You know, now in this day and age where reduce, reuse, recycle is, is in the forefront, right? Yeah. It's starting not to make sense to dispose of things. Absolutely. Yeah. We still have a little ways to go, but I think your, your work is a good example of, of all those qualities. Thank you. And how does your work carry over to your day-to-day -day life? Well, I, I think about it all the time, I yeah. suppose. Uh, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't consider it work, really. It's just, that's my life. 